Hello guys and welcome to Odson Seria 25th match day the Escudetto title race is completely open and we have Napoli Inter so let's see what Danny thinks about this game and of course uh, let me know your tips and predictions for this match day and don't forget to press the like and subscribe and now let's go on with the show Twenty fifth match day in Serie A, Danny. What a match day! What a Saturday! Because we have Napoli Inter, another partita scudetto. How are you? I'm I'm very well, but they keep coming. Well, at least for Inter, now that they got this asymmetric calendar, they really have a very difficult run of fixtures. Uh, I suspect uh, by Sunday there could be a new leader, or by Saturday evening if Napoli wins, it's getting uh, obviously more exciting. By the way, Inter has one game in hand, but the title race is more open than ever. Exactly, they have to play in Bologna, and actually we are going to start with uh, Bologna visiting Lazio. Here we can see Lazio super favorites after the victory against Fiorentina. We are always talking, or we were always talking, Danny, about Lazio problems in defense, but now four clean sheets in a row. They drew with Atalanta as well, godless draw. So I guess uh, since Bologna is in a bad run, we can trust Lazio. Well, obviously, because uh, Sarri is staying in the ship. Yes, they look more defensively cohesive, uh, less mistakes at the back, surprisingly, because they were missing the centre-back Acerbi, which was going to be uh, out for the, this game as well. But they seem that they'd be working more as a unit. And yes, uh, the clean sheet of Firenze was impressive against a team that usually scores a lot. And let's not forget, Lazio got the first first best attack of Serie A, also first best attack at home. So it is a team that could be trusted in terms of getting scoring opportunities. By the way, they got the top goal scorer Immobile with 18 goals, Milinkovic Savic already 8 assists. And you know, at home Lazio this season have been uh, good value, unbeaten in the last four, only lost to Juventus this season overall. Uh, so, you know, one defeat in uh, six uh, in the last uh, six games. And also they kept four clean sheets in the cup competition last year when they played at home. So, yes, at the Olimpico, I think they can be uh, trusted. The reverse fixtures was a surprise because Bologna won 3 0, and that was the first time when Mihailovic switched back to the 3 5 2, which by the way, it's more a 5-3-2 because uh, Bologna is very defensively minded. I think what Bologna, what happened this season is that they invested money on getting a striker, Arnautovic, hoping to play more expansive and propositive football. But in the end, Mihailovic reversed more to a solid, difficult to break formation, which has got its advantage as well. But when the wing backs, they don't work as well as they could. And also they got a few absences there. Uh, De Silvestri, for example, has been out. Hickey has been a little bit in the miss. Then Bologna lose a lot of threat. Uh, they kept a clean sheet against Empoli, surprisingly, because, you know, they hit the post twice. Empoli hit the post twice. So it wasn't really a nil-nil. It's the eighth clean sheet of the season. And this is a positive for uh, Bologna. But um, the results are not coming. They lost six games away, lost three of the last four, no wins in four games, only two goals scored in the last four games. Maybe with Musa Barro coming back from the Africa Cup of Nation, they'll get more uh, goals. But, you know, I can see Lazio favorites. The odds for Lazio to win this one are quite low. Go on the goals market, trust the home side to score a couple, perhaps in the first half. So you could go over 1.25 goals in the first half, which pays 215. If there's only one goal in the first half, you only lose half your stake. And now the game of the games, Napoli-Inter, the second against the first one after so many weeks. Danny, Inter can lose their leadership after the defeat in the derby. You mentioned the tough calendar, of course. They host Milan, they play against Roma in Coppa Italia, by the way, they won. They are playing Liverpool the following week and in the middle of this, they have to visit the Diego Armando Maradona in a good moment for Napoli. Four consecutive victories for them after the win against Venezia. 
And we always thought January is going to be difficult for Napoli. So many absentees, the Africa Cup of Nation, Osimhen, Zambanghisa, Koulibaly. Well, 13 points out of 15, and the only draw came at Juventus 1-1 when Napoli were the better team on the pitch. So they can really look forward to this game and to the rest of the league. And yes, they have a golden chance of challenging until the very last uh, moment. Uh, rotations for Spalletti have been really good. They found resources in players that perhaps they thought they were not able to give them much, uh, like Unas, uh, like Elmas, the same Petagna, Mertens and his scoring boots again. Insigne, of course, is going to move at the end of the season, but he's still performing at a good level. And now with everyone back, everyone fit, I think Koulibaly is going to be back for this one after the success with Senegal. Yes, Napoli look strong and look really, really uh, threatening. They are the second in the home table, although they lost three games. And I think against Spezia and Empoli, we said many times, they were very unlucky. Best home defense for Napoli with only goal, eight goals conceded. And at the weekend at Venezia, Ospina kept the 11th clean sheet of the season. If Napoli gets back to the defensive solidity, which by the way, they lost in that defeat against Inter when they conceded three, I think they can be really, really uh, dangerous. Inter, uh, I mean, a slap in the face for them in the derby because they play well for 50 minutes, had chances, missed them. And then um, I think they lost a little bit of the nerves. They couldn't... Um, you know, play the nerves game very well with Milan, they got more nervous. And also, I think there is something a little bit worrying about Inter is the physical condition. The rhythm seems to go down quite a lot after 40 minutes, but when they start well, and often they start on the front foot, then they do create a lot of chances, as they did with Roma as well. They scored after a minute and they had a lot of chances as well, but there is a quite a pattern. So I'm a little bit worried whether physical form for Inter is not quite there. And obviously these games have been really, really testing. And But recently, since the turn of the year, usually the last 30 minutes of games have not been uh, brilliant. Um, they got pretty much the same points as last year, three points less with one game in hand. But what could concern a little bit in Zaghi is the fact that two strikers, Lautaro and Dzeko, are not scoring as much as Lautaro and Lukaku scored last year. But Inter have scored more goals the last year because it's more of a collective effort and conceded less. But I think to win certain games, you need your number nine, your number 10 to start scoring. Lautaro doesn't look very, very uh, sharp. They always conceded the Inter since the beginning of the year, apart from Roma. They kept the clean sheet in the Coppa Italia. They will be without Bastoni, suspended because of the insult to the referee. So again, going back to the nervousness, Inzaghi also suspended for the same reason. Tough one, tough one to call, tough one to call a winner. Um, go with the, with the statistics. Often is an over, often is an over 2.5 goals. I know Napoli defense has been good. Over 2.5 as well, 192. Indeed, it's very tough. Uh, odds are pretty similar for both outcomes, Napoli victory or Inter victory. Inter being slightly favourites and the same for the over or under 2.5 goals. Uh, you mentioned the over 1.92, the under is 2.10. So <laughs> the bookies don't know actually what to think uh, because there is no big favourite, not even for the goals market uh, in this partita. Scudetto, Napoli, Inter and the last game we have on Saturday is Torino-Venezia. We usually like Torino when they are playing at home. Why? Because in the last eight games played at home, six victories, two draws. And I guess, Danny, we should trust them again because they are playing Venezia. Now they fall into the bottom three. Yeah, uh, after many, many weeks, although they go one game in hand, but Cagliari results means Venezia, who could not pick a point, they lost three of the last uh, six uh, Venezia, they really struggle for goals here. The Venezia are in the relegation zone. Goal difference, minus 20. This is worrying. The third worst attack for Venezia. They are struggling to score. Second worst away attack. Only seven goals scored when they travel uh, Venezia. Um, I think they can put together good performances, but sometimes it's the lack of experience, uh, the lack of cutting edge. It is... Uh, damaging. Uh, let's see what impact the new signings have for Venezia. We have seen a bit of Nani, we've seen a bit of Nsame. Uh, not enough uh, to have the better of Napoli, of course, at the weekend. And now Torino. Torino is a double fuss. 
Torino at home, 24 points, third in the table. Torino away, 8 points, third from bottom. Against Udinese, away, so disappointing. They were almost playing for the nil-nil, and in the end, they got done it by two goals, also because of two goalkeepers' mistake. Yes, Torino, they don't concede many goals, they don't concede many chances, but when they play away, you know, they need, they need, they need something more. At home is a different story. They're much more aggressive, they press much, they press much higher, uh, they dominate teams like Fiorentina, we saw it, you know, they play well, they often uh, score, they go the fourth, fourth best attack at home with 24 24 goals scored and you know they always scored but against Juventus so you could trust them to go on the score sheet again amazing for a team that is doing all of this without a number nine without Belotti mm, I trust Torino to win and I trust Torino to win well uh, so it could be a win to nil 245 and then uh, on Sunday Milan they are waiting for Inter to drop points and perhaps even they can top the table at the end of the day Milan Sandoria but be careful Danny with this game because Milan they are again struggling when they are playing at home like last season one victory in the last four games and now they are hosting Sampdoria perhaps is a different team after that victory for nil against Sassuolo now with Gianpaolo on the bench perhaps we see a reaction from the Blue Cherkia team. We'll see this is going to be an interesting one because Milan will know the results of Napoli Inter will have pressure because they know they have to get the result and you know already uh, lost a few points in the way against Spezia yes they lost they didn't deserve but they didn't play did it very well either against Juventus only a nil nil not very threatening Milan look they are improving although they got the same points as last year when I mean the real fall started now in February for me for Milan last year but now they're improving in terms of team spirit they stay in the games much more I think they got they realize that in certain games, uh, perhaps like against Inter, they can't match bad teams. But if they stay in the game, then they got that um, that experience as well of having played under Pioli for over two years and a half that allows them to uh, go back and bring uh, results. And you have to say also Milan is doing this with a lot of injuries. They are without Kjaer, they are without Rebic, they are without Ibrahimovic, you know, uh, they have to be praised. Not sure about the role of Kessie uh, since the negotiation about his contract started, his performance hasn't really been that great, but Brahim Diaz came from the bench and changed the derby. So did Giroud with uh, two uh, goals. You know, the home form for Milan has been uh, better this season. Last year, they were really let down by the home games. Uh, they will be without Teo Hernandez, who's been sent off in the in the, in the, um, in the derby. Uh, so let's see who plays at that side. Probably Kalulu, it's not quite the same uh, force going forward. Uh, Sampdoria, five points above Cagliari, first win for Giampaolo, first clean sheet after 22 games, uh, helped by the poor defending of the Sassuolo, shocking defending, but they were able to take the chances. And yes, you know, at the back, uh, a touch like as well, Sassuolo had the chances as well. They will be without Gabbiadini. This is a bad news for them. He, he, he broke his uh, cruciate ligament, so he's going to be out for the season. He's got a few goals for them. And they brought back Sebastian Jovinko from from uh, from Canada. So I mean, they they haven't replaced a like for like. So they have replaced a one ninety five centimeter striker with one with one seventy. I don't really see what Jovinko is doing there. They already got Sensi and Quagliarella. Really interesting to see. Slensi, by the way, play well. Score as soon in, in his debut against Sampdoria. Um, already conceded forty one goals. Sampdoria in this uh, in this season. So you could go. Uh, for Milan to score, of course, maybe Milan to score first, Milan to win, but the good odds, I think, is both to score, uh, considering who's sitting on Sampdoria bench, Giampaolo, a manager that, you know, wants his time to play on the, foot, on, on the front foot, and also has had a bad spell at Milan, so he might want a bit of revenge, both to score, 190. Jovinko, La Formica, the ant, uh, back to the Serie A, Parma, Juve, and now Sandoria, Dani. Then uh, we have Empoli, Cagliari, another interesting one, and I pretty much like the odds for Cagliari here, very interesting. 3.9 because they are out of the bottom three after the whole season, basically there. They beat Atalanta 1-2 on the road, three victories in the last five games, and they are visiting the Castellari with an Empoli that they are bad actually recently they lost uh, the last three games at home but even away they are not great 
Do you also like the odds for Cagliari or Cagliari Asian Handicap Zero or something like this? I do. I do like the odds for Cagliari because I think they got the talisman who's Pereiro. Start scoring a lot of goals, score at Genoa they won, score two at Bergamo they won, score at home against Bologna they won. He's the Luomo Salvezza, the man of the salvation, you know. And they won at Bergamo without strikers. Up front they were playing Pereiro, who's mainly is a midfielder, and Dalbert, who's a left back. And yet they managed to win. They made the most of uh, Atalanta um, mistakes and going forward. Also after the 1-1. And yes, they exploit them on the counter-attack. But this is a more solid Cagliari. You can see the hand of Mazzari. They made some changes. They brought some young players. Uh, they got rid of Godin and Caceres, who were not probably uh, doing the best. Conceded five in the last five. Scored five in the last five. Very average numbers. But with these numbers, you're going to get saved. Cagliari, last, last season, at this stage of the season, they had 18 points. This year, they got 20. So if they got saved last season, I think you can think, yes, they're probably going to get saved for this season as well. For this one, they get back João Pedro. By the way, he already scored 10 goals, so he's a threat. Uh, they won two of the last three away games, uh, Cagliari. Um, and now I'll tell you how bad Empoli are at home. Cagliari away have got nine points. Empoli at home have got 10 points. So, you know, at the Castellani, it's almost, you know, a free hit for everyone. Everyone go there and collect points. It's also a question of experience. Empoli... They got a lot of praise, but they need to start winning games. No wins in seven. They collected the first clean sheet at home against Bologna in six games. And at, at home, they conceded so many goals because the way they play, the expansive football way, very entertaining to watch. They conceded 33 goals at home, goal difference at home, minus 14. These are really, really, really bad numbers. Double chance for Cagliari, if you want to be a little bit cautious, X2. 194. What a great odds. Makes sense indeed to back uh, a little bit Cagliari here, or a lot, no matter, <laughs> depends on what you want. Uh, then we have the game of fear, Genoa Salernitana. This is now or never, I think, for the Rosso Blue after the goalless draw against uh, Roma and also against Udinese. Time for them to win, Danny. Let's see if they are able to at least score goals against the worst defense in Serie A. Salernitana, that at least they picked up a point against Spezia. Oh, yeah, this is going to be, I mean, he's a six pointer. Who loses this one is definitely going to Serie B. Salernitana is going to Serie B anyway. But, you know, probably uh, Genoa. Yeah, this, this is really the last chance. Second worst attack for Genoa behind Salernitana. Uh, but it is a Genoa with the new manager, with Blessing. It's more aggressive, they press more, it's more compact, organized. They had good spells at Roma in that nil-nil. I think they deserve to lose in the end because Zaniolo goal should have stood. But nonetheless, it is a nil-nil. 21 games without a win for Genoa. They never won a home so far this season. They only won 3-2 at uh, Cagliari. So it is a great opportunity. The last three games at home, somehow, they only conceded one. Last game was a nil-nil against Sudinese. Uh, they need to be more uh, courageous in uh, this one. And now Salernitana, I watched them against Spezia. It looked like a new team, also because they've signed 13 players, eight of them were on the pitch. Uh, Verdi scored two goals, the new signing, two free kicks identical. You know, Verdi was a guy that when he used to play for Bologna, big things were said about him. Uh, he refused then a move to Napoli and his career didn't quite go to plan. But, you know, with Verdi, with Musset up front, uh, Fazio at the back, dishing out, you know, the foul here and there. I think they look, they had more purpose, more intent, especially towards the game against Spezia. They look more threatening in the end. Was only a 2-2. Only seven points away for Salernitana this season. They got the second worst away defense. Uh, but I think they're going to go for it. They're going to give, they're going to give Genoa a good game. I'm going to be cautious, though, because I don't think the host can score that many goals. So I'm going to go for an over one goal in the first half, which pays 195. So basically, if there's only one goal in the first half, you get your money back. Okay? One nil each way, you get your money back. But if there is two goals, you win 195. If you have nil nil, I'm afraid you're going to lose a stake. Mm, the draw is not valid for neither of the teams, so they have to go for it. They have to 
win if they want to keep their hopes alive. Uh, then we go to the north, uh, Verona, Udinese here, two teams in the middle of the table. Verona quite inconsistent when they are playing at the Ventegodi, only one victory in the last six games. Udinese, the Vettorino in the last minutes, important victory by the way, to stay away from the relegation battle, Danny. Here the draw gives us good odds because Verona, they are huge favorites for this game. Yeah, they are because normally they're okay at home, although they lost four, only won one of the last five, just kept one clean sheet at home. You can feel that Verona is going to go for it, but their defense is not uh, the uh, greatest. You know, in Torino, they had some absentees, Verona. They had they were without Simeone, without Caprari, without Faraoni, yet they had good spells and they kept possession well for 20-25 minutes. They couldn't find the clear-cut uh, chance. It was only the second defeat in uh, six games. If you look at Verona, I think a team that is weaker than last season, we said it time and time again, they are pretty much in the table as they were last season, two points less. But what has changed? They score many more goals. They scored 12 goals more than last season, 43. It is a team that really has found some good forms and up front with Barak and the other players that I mentioned. It is threatening. I think uh, it, you know they got a, a very good uh, setup. Sometimes uh, the belief. Sometimes what Udinese misses is the the lack of belief. I think Udinese has got good players as well in attacking positions. Sometimes they set up too uh, defensively, and so they did against uh, Torino. They, again, they were set up to do the nil nil. Uh, Cioffi then uh, did some attacking changes uh, for once. They brought in Molina and Pussetto, the two scores, thanks to two mistakes from uh, the Torino uh, goalkeeper, and they won the game. It's a, it's a massive win uh, for them because he also achieved without uh, Deulofeu. You know how many points they got uh, compared to last season? Just one point less. So it is the same. It is absolutely the same. I don't understand why they sacked the manager. I will say time and time again. They are scoring a bit more. They are conceding a bit more. I think it's pretty much the same. And you know what you're going to get uh, with Udinese. Hard to beat. A uh, lot, of, lot of character. But again, sometimes some results could be a little bit crazy. They score four a Lazio. They score four a Cagliari. So, you know, difficult, difficult to uh, predict. They've done better away than at home uh, so far. So I would expect goals in this one, because uh, this, especially because of Verona attitude. So I'm going to combine two odds to give you a little mini hacker for this one. It's both to score and over 1.5 goals, you know, see each each of them, they don't pay too much, but if you put them together, both to score and over 1.5 goals, 2 for 2. Well, if both teams uh, score, actually we have already and you, over 1.5 yes. goals. Indeed. Um, then in the Mapei Stadium, Sassuolo Roma, you mentioned before the draw against Genoa, very disappointing, but of course the Giallo Rossi have the right to be angry with the referee this season is been they've been very unlucky or however you want to tell it yeah. <laughs> it was crazy how they disallowed the goal of saniolo dani and now they are visiting sassuolo they look so bad right now four nil against sandoria one point in the last uh, three games one victory in the last seven games leaking and leaking what can we expect? Roma, big favorites here, 2.2 odds for them to win. They are, but they are not very continuous. They don't have that continuity on the pitch, you know, in terms of performance. Also, the way they set up sometimes is a bit defensive. I watched them at Milano against Inter. A decent game in Coppa Italia, but they waited a little bit too much. And then I think, you know, they got a very good striker partnership with Zaniolo and Abram. The problem is sometimes that Abram plays a bit too far away from the box, he tends to drift on the right, and then it's only Zaniolo trying to battle against two or three defenders, and we saw it against Inter, it's not quite that. The best game to play for them would be a counter-attacking game, but against teams that keep the possession very well, they might spend three, four minutes without seeing the ball, and that will happen at uh, Milano, and eventually they got tired, despite creating some few chances. Look, I think now Roma numbers are decent in terms of big chances. For example, Abram is the player that creates more big chances in Italy uh, in terms of shots, in terms of corners. You know, these are all good attacking stats for them. It is the continuity that lacks, and also there is a little bit of nervousness. I mean, you are right when you say uh, they feel victim of the system, they feel victim 
of the referee's mistakes. Yes, things have gone against them a lot, I must say. And uh, um, it's also true that uh, this reflects on the pitch. You know, if you take, for example, Mancini and Zaniolo, they are in the top five of players with more cards in uh, Serie A. Um, sometimes, you know, the claims of injustice or the things that have happened to them, they're not normally backed by good performances on the on the pitch. Though they will be without Zaniolo, because he's been suspended, got sent off against Roma for protesting. They might be without Abram, who picked up a slight injury at the end of the game. So if they are without these two, Mourinho is really left with a lot of doubts who to put a center forward. Is he going to trust Shomudorov? Is he going to put a Fenagian with Carles Perez? So not a big center striker. We'll see. Roma, so far away, they've been decent. Five wins, five defeats, no uh, draws. They got five points less than last season. Everyone would expect it to go up a level with Mourinho. And this hasn't happened. Sassuolo... They didn't score at Genoa, strangely, because they always score away. So this time they didn't uh, score. Uh, shocking defending, though, against Sampdoria. I mean, they left uh, Caputo and Conti completely on their own for the first and the, and the third uh, goal. Um, they conceded far too many goals. Uh, this, this year they conceded 42 goals, last season 37. So that's really the pitfall of Sassuolo from uh, the Zerbi to uh, Dionisi. At home, they've not been great, only one win in the last seven. But let's not forget, Sassuolo turned up against the big teams. At home, they have beat Lazio, they drew in Napoli, they did very well with Inter, they lost, they didn't deserve to lose. But there is a big caveat, they're going to be without Raspadori and Scamacca, both suspended, so two of the three main men up front. For this reason, for the absences of Roma, I'm going to go for an under, three goals, 190. So again, conservative, 2-1 each way, 3-0 each way. You get your money back, under three goals. The bookie expect goals, but I think as soon as they realize Abram might not be playing, these odds might change. Interesting, Danny. Then uh, on Sunday, the late kickoff face Atalanta Juve. Things have changed a lot for both teams yeah. since Atalanta won at the Juventus Stadium, was the last defeat of the Bianconeri, now they beat Verona, they have Vlaovic, Zakaria, both uh, score and I guess they are traveling uh, to Bergamo, Dani, with the hope of, of getting another victory there because uh, Atalanta, they are so poor playing at home, one point in the last three home games out of the Champions League spots, key this game for the Champions League race. Absolutely, who wins this I probably can clinch the top four. I think they will have a lot of chances to get top four. Let's not forget that Atalanta has got one game in hand. Now, Juventus, they never beaten a top team so far this season, apart from Chelsea at home in the Champions League. So, in the league, they always struggle against the top teams, apart from the win against Lazio and Roma, but we don't consider them in the top four yet. Uh, but the number says that Juventus, since the end of October, they've been the best team in Italy leveling on points with Inter. Sometimes, often, let's say, the performances have not been as good as the one of Inter. So it's almost been gone unseen, the progresses that Juventus has done. What happened on Sunday against Verona is that the introduction of Vlaovic and the new three, the new front three of Juventus with Morata playing more on the wing, it worked. None of the three had a great game. I think they made a few individual errors in terms of passes or crosses or movements. Vlaovic was dispossessed many times, but he changed the complexion and he changed the attitude of the team. Out of a sudden, Morata doesn't need to worry to be the only man up top. He's got someone else that can do the dirty job and he can, and whereas Morana, Morata can run more on the wings and on the channels. Dybala has got someone else to give the ball and to play 1-2. And also the introduction of Zakaria, who by the way scored, allowed this three a little bit more freedom. We'll see now Locatelli coming back and I think Locatelli is going to have more of a box-to-box -box role where he's best, whereas before he was played more as a uh, playmaker. They need to score more goals. That's the big problem for Juventus. Vlaovic scored. Let's see if he solves the problem. Away from home, they've been average. Only the eighth attack of Serie A. But, you know, the last away games for Juventus have been good. They won four of the last six. Uh, four clean sheets in the last six away uh, games. They will be without Chiellini for this one and for a few games. So, you know, um, the defense is solid. We'll see Bonucci and the league that works. 
and they visit a troubled Atalanta. Atalanta is in trouble. Now they are without Zapata for two, three months because of an injury. Muriel is not doing as well as he used to do. He's been very good when he comes on the bench, or when he starts from the first minute, he's been good. They only won three league games so far this season, so really, really poor. They conceded 17 at home, just to give you a perspective, a perspective, Spezia considered three goals less at home. So defensively, uh, Atalanta been really, really uh, poor. However, they got the same points as last year with one game in hand. So are they going to finish the season strongly as they normally do? Because that will happen in the last three seasons. They start so, so, especially at home. And then from February till May, they got a, an amazing record we'll see they will be without Musso without uh, the keeper sent off Miranchuk Ilicic who they're lacking a lot of their creativity they need to go for it let's see if maybe now Atalanta playing with slightly less pressure now that they know that they're out of the title race definitively that could give them um, they could give them a little bit more uh, more balance more stability I'm gonna go for goals I think uh, Juventus front three look promising Atalanta we know is an attacking team as well over 2.5 goals 199 and Danny, after this uh, great Atalanta Juve on Monday, we have the last game, Spezia. Fiorentina, now Spezia, eight points away from the relegation after a great spell. Ten points in the last four games. You mentioned the draw against Salernitana in the last uh, game. And Fiorentina right now is a big question mark. So it's, uh, I guess it's kind of difficult to trust them, especially with these low odds of 2.0. Yes, uh, we have to see how Cabral sets, you know, adapts to the new team. We are recording this. We have watched Atalanta Fiorentina in the Coppa Italia, so we don't know what's going to happen there. But you know, so far Fiorentina way they've been disappointing. Even when Vlaovic was there, a goal difference minus six, five defeats in the last eight away games, only scored two in the last three. Two of them, Vlaovic wasn't uh, there. It's a team that uh, keeps a lot of the ball, uh, starts games strongly. Sometimes they fade out in the second in the second half of games. So again, it is a. I think well, you can see what Italiano has done. He has revitalized the team, has changed the way they play compared to last season. They are not quite there uh, to challenge for uh, top positions. Um, sometimes they get a little bit nervous. Torreira got sent off against Lazio. Bonaventura also is going to get suspended. So this is going to be a key game for Fiorentina. If they don't win this one, really, their hopes to get into the Europa League, they're going to fade away. And this play, especially, which is a little miracle, I think, in Italy, for a team that, remember, has not been strengthened in the, in the December, January transfer windows because of a FIFA ban. It is the youngest team in Serie A, with a manager that is always on the verge of being sacked Tiago Motta, they only lost one of the last seven. In those seven games, they always scored. They have one more point than last season, but the numbers are worse. They scored six goals less, and they conceded one more goal from last season. So you say, how can they have more points from last season? Well, they've been very good at keeping clean sheets, for example, especially at home. They picked up a few one nil win. They have been also a touch lucky. You know, those six points at Napoli and Milan, they are a masterpiece of what luck means. They probably deserve only one point. It's Let's see, because you know, you can't just get saved because of sheer luck. At home, they only won one of the last five, but they are above the relegation zone. If they win this one, I think they're almost there. It is tough to call, I think. It is tough to call. I like the fact that Spezia have got goal scorers. They got Verde, they got uh, Ghiasi, they got Manai. They, they, got, they got people who can score goals. Let's see what Fiorentina does. Over 1.5 goals in the second half. So you go for two goals or more in the second half, 196. Won't be easy for sure for Fiorentina to win at the Stadio Pico. Danny, this is it. Then before the Champions League, we have an uh, interesting uh, Serie A match day, of course, with the Scudetto still in play so let's see your aka no another aka for this uh, weekend five games torino to win empoli cagliari second half double chance x2 genoa salernitana and 2.5 goals juventus to take the lead against atalanta spezia fiorentina is an over 1.5 goals the total odds over 10 10 88 great danny as always a pleasure thank you and see you next week
Ciao Edu, speak soon, bye bye. We have now all the tips for this new match day. Who are you backing? Napoli or Inter Milan? Let me know, of course, in the comment section your tips, your predictions and any comments you want to share. And of course, don't forget, press the like and subscribe to our channel. Or if you want, we also have a podcast for you. Ciao. Arrivederci.